Welcome to the LMU Women's Basketball Report for February 7th, our first one of February. Coach Evans in here with uh, myself, Scott Erland, to talk about uh, some women's hoops, as always. Coach, uh, thanks for taking the time out of your day to join us, as always. Um, talking about last week, uh, you know, you go over to Brevard and get the 86-74 win, pretty pretty easy breezy win over there. But then what I really want to focus on is, is the Wingate game, uh, unfortunately, just for the first time all season had to experience the pain of a loss uh, a really tough one to swallow 71 to 69 loss but um you know just talk about last week well i mean obviously it was tough because we would have loved to have gone throughout the entire season being undefeated and and uh and it was a nice nice streak as it lasted and um but i, I just feel like the last few games uh we just the pressure's been building. We've been playing different. We've been uh, our mentality's been more playing not to lose versus playing to win. And again, because I I think the girls were putting so much pressure on themselves, trying to keep that streak going and and remaining undefeated. And you know, of course, you're gonna you know get everybody's best shot. And Wingate was very prepared for us. And and um, you know they had a great game and a great game plan and they executed really well. And and uh, you know the last second shot fell in their favor, and and um, and it's funny when it when it actually went in, and you know I called timeout, and advanced the ball, and we still had .2 seconds left on the uh, on the game clock. You know it it's you, I guess it's just because we hadn't been in that position before really all season. Um, it just. It, you still kind of believe that you know something good was going to happen, and and we still had a shot, and I mean I did believe that, and uh, but when you know we couldn't even get a shot off at the end. I mean really with that time, all you could do is really tip it in, and and they were packing in the paint so well that we didn't really get uh, much of a pass off, and and so you know when when the buzzer actually you know actually sounded, it, it was just a huge like look of shock, and that kind of went across our entire team, and you know so we went into the locker room afterwards and um, and I mean you know my first thought was I was worried because the girls were they were crying and and um, I mean it, it was just as if we had lost the national championship game I mean I, I thought you know it was, it, I just was worried with how devastated uh, the team was and uh, you know I told them I said you know I'm glad this hurts you know I'm glad that you're upset. I'm glad that, you know, I see uh, tears in your eyes and, and that sort of thing um, because it means that you care. And, and and obviously if we feel this way and, and you guys remember how you feel right now, we'll do something different to not ever feel this way again. But um, but they really resolved themselves in that locker room uh, to come out and be more focused. And there's things that we could have done. Uh, mistakes that we made in that game that you know again it, it was by two points one basket so you know if each individual in that locker room made one less mistake I mean we would have won you know by maybe even double digits at that point um, so you know I, I think it's just more focusing on us getting us better as a team but at the end of the day, I, I do feel like this is actually a good thing, um, as weird as that sounds, uh, and I think it's actually going to make us a better team. Well, and then you, you got off to a really nice start that game, got up by 13 in the first quarter, and then Wingate kind of turns things around in the second quarter, and then from then on out, it's a, well, no pun intended, a dogfight, but um, what kind of changed for you guys from the first quarter? What kind of adjustments did Wingate make that made things difficult for you? Well, I, the, obviously, uh, Denasia Witherspoon, you know, she was hitting the outside shot, and you know, we knew that she could hit mid-range shots, but we were going to more make her try to, you know, shoot from um, more of the mid-range area, and um, and she was knocking them down, uh, you know, and uh, and we never adjusted. I mean, you know, it's one of those things like, well, if the kids hit, she's hit two now. Uh, we might want to get out there and guard her, and and it's just um, just little things. There's there's several things. Um, again, I, I think that you know they were attacking very well, and we weren't closing our gaps. And you know, we only had uh, one thing that we talked about before the game was taking charges against this team, and you know we only had one charge attempt. It ended up being a blocking foul. But at the end of the day, if one of my players attempts to take a charge I'm not upset with that even if the call is a blocking foul like I think that that's admirable that she tried to you know take the charge and and you know sacrificed her body 
Um, but we didn't have that enough, and there was a lot of times where I felt like, you know, the Wingate guards put their head down and, and you know, uh, drove to the basket, and there were times that they, they were out of control. Like, even the last play, I felt like had we just stood in front of her, we could have very well possibly had a charge. And um, I, mean, I don't know if the, if the officials would have called it in that situation, but, again, you know, um, it would have been nice <laughs> to uh, stand your ground, basically. Um, but... You know, it's it's one of those things that I just feel like the last few games we kind of been skirting by and not playing up to our potential. And hopefully this was a wake-up call and, and, you know, you'll see a big difference in our team on Wednesday. Well, and then, what, you know, we've there's been a lot of times that we've learned a ton about your team so far this season, and, and all of it's been pretty pretty outstanding stuff. You get groups down by seven, as many as seven in the fourth quarter, come back, make that furious charge, and really give yourself some uh, – a chance to win it against a, a really good team and you know even the last layup uh, we talked about this before we started filming that last that last bucket was one that's you know amber neely makes who was one of six before that shot in the game she makes that probably one out of 50 tries so you know what did you learn about the resiliency of your group you know in that game itself and then what have you learned about your group since well the one thing that i really love about this team is again there was never a moment of panic in the game the entire 40 minutes. I mean, uh, even, you know, when we got up 13, we weren't uh, comfortable, we weren't relaxed because we knew, like, you know, basketball's a game of runs, and we just made a run. We knew that they were going to make a run at some point, and as much as you'd like to hope not, I mean, it just it, that's just how normally the games work out. And um, so, you know, we weren't necessarily satisfied. We weren't complacent. Um, I just felt like – you know, the team, we, we just were very calm. Um, and and honestly, I enjoyed that, but I also believe that that kind of mentality was the one that got us beat as well because um, we just – we have such a high belief in our team, and it's kind of like a when we know we're going to pull it out, we know we're going to, you know, take care of business, that mistakes just kept on, like, creeping in, and it's – it's, you know, I told him, I said, this isn't coming out exactly how our team is, but the way that we were playing kind of portrayed like a nonchalant attitude, whereas more, I know it's just a confident in our team, but I told him, I was like, y'all, there wasn't a sense of urgency. And you can't let your confidence, you know, override your sense of urgency. And uh, that, I believe that that's what happened. I mean, there was... Um, several times down in the last few minutes that we made very poor decisions on the offensive end and we really could have taken care of business and gotten a good shot and we didn't we had missed uh missed opportunities and and you know i just uh i just feel like again had we had the game to do all over after losing and feeling that way our focus would have been totally different so again you know as as painful as it was to lose i do think it it's gonna fuel us uh, for the next uh, six games to finish out the season. Well, and I, and I want you to elaborate on that a little further because obviously, you know, they're, you know, they were an unknown territory for anybody, not only for the program, but in SAC history, nobody's ever started 20-0. and 0. Um, And obviously that does kind of perpetuate and build on itself and there becomes a sense of pressure to keep it going. So um, you had mentioned earlier that you thought that it would be a good thing losing and kind of getting that monkey off your back in terms of feeling that pressure. So... Uh, have you seen that so far in practice, in your, in your first day of practice coming back? I have. Um, uh, on Monday, our, our practice was a lot more uh, a lot more excitement. What's happened? And, you know, again, this is the first time I've ever been in this situation, and it's obviously the first time that my players have been in this situation. So we're kind of learning how to deal with it as we go, uh, which isn't always great. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, but I'll, I'll tell you for myself – I mean, I'm I'm passionate about coaching. I mean, this is what I love. This is what I want to do. And, you know, to stay up all night watching film is really, I mean, that's just the norm. But it, it turned from being passionate to obsessive, you know, where I need to watch every single play. I need to make sure that I'm prepared. I need to, you know, and you start getting tight. And if I'm doing that as a coach, there's no wonder that the team is doing that as players, you know. And... It's it. We've lost the excitement. We've lost the fun. Even though this team, don't get me wrong, is very exciting to watch and they're very fun to be around. But as far as us playing in the way that we were 
just handling it and and uh, enjoying it. Um, I think we've we lost it somewhere um, because again, it's just you're playing. You don't want Winget to be the team to you know uh, break your streak. You didn't want Brevard to be the team to break your streak. And it's it's not you know, hey, I get I get the opportunity to come out and play against Winget. That's, you know, where it used to be, that mentality. It's, it's oh, I don't want Winget to mess up what we got going on here. And you can't really play games with that mentality. You have to, you know, it's got to be exciting. It's got to be, you know, uh, it's it's just, it's different than what we were doing. And, and um, looking back, the only thing that I'm most probably disappointed with and more myself is just I didn't enjoy it. Like, and I feel like I didn't allow the players to really enjoy what was happening. And that really took a lot out of our play. Um, and so really Monday night was just, you know, I was telling them that uh, I was watching Brielle uh, do her homework at the house and uh, on Monday before practice. And we actually had practice Monday night. And I, you know, was helping her read her, you know, Brielle's five years old and she's in kindergarten. She had to read like six different sentences and every time she would sound out the sentence and she would read it correctly, she'd just sit there and she'd be like, yes! And she would cheer after every little sentence. And, and I just, you know, was fascinated because I was like, man, she's enjoying her homework. How weird is that? Like, you know, she's actually having fun. And I told the players, I was like, y'all, we've lost this, you know, in how we play. Like, all the little things um, have become norm for us. Like, we don't cheer for Shay Coker every time she hits a shot because it's just – that's what's been happening. She's supposed to hit the shot now. Or we don't cheer for every time, like, Ross Mathis makes a great defensive stop or, or does something amazing. Like, we don't cheer because it's something she's supposed to do. And I was like, you know, y'all, we can't take for granted what we have. We've got something very special, and we need to, you know, be excited and enthusiastic about all the little things that are happening because it carries over to big things. And I felt like we got that back on Monday night. Well, that's nice. And then you get to learn, uh, you know, a lot more about your team as they have to, for the first time this season, have to deal with uh, rebounding from a loss and host Tuscom here on Wednesday night. And, um, you know, you look at Tuscom's record and it's and it's not pretty uh, sitting at five and 15 overall. But um, they beat Anderson on yeah. Wednesday, last Wednesday. Yeah. It was uh, who we know is a really tough team and uh, they're playing better basketball of late. Just had a tough loss at Lenore Ryan on Saturday. So, um and we remember when we went just less than a month ago to Tuscum, they gave us all we wanted until kind of made it uh, pulled away in the second half. So, you know, talk about what you're hoping to see from your girls on, on Wednesday night. Well, I think Tuscum's a great team. I think they've been playing better and better every single game, uh, and especially here uh, as of late. And, uh, and to beat Anderson, I mean, Anderson gave us a run for our money at their place. And so, you know, that's definitely uh, something to, to pay attention to. Um, but more so... Than just Tusculum, like I said, I, I wanted to use these last uh, two days of practice to really focus on us and get us back to, you know, get us back loose, get us get us uh, back being aggressive because we've been starting the game here lately. Um, like I said, with the mentality of trying not to lose instead of coming out there to win, and you know, I need us to have that focus back, and and uh, so that's really what practice has been, you know, geared around. Um, again, that's not taking anything uh, away from Tusculum because we're, you know, you know, focus on them, focus on their plays and, and, and uh, their personnel uh, today. But, you know, like I said, if I, if I feel like coming out of these two days of practice, we're a better team than we were on Saturday, then I think it's going to show on Wednesday. Well, I'm talking about their personnel. Casey Johnson ranked uh, seventh in the, in the conference in scoring and has really been playing well of late. Last time around, she had 28 points against us, so uh, obviously a big focus is going to be on her and defending her this time around. Uh, and Casey's a hard matchup because Casey can shoot the three. She can take you off the dribble. She can also <laughs> post up. She's kind of those uh, tweeners. Uh, you know, she's six foot and, and uh, long, lanky. She can get up and down the floor. I mean, she just really is a, is a matchup uh, concern for us. But... Um, you know, I, I do I do think it's a challenge that our, our players are, are ready to take on and and uh, 
you know, I, I again, I, I think you're going to see a very exciting team on Wednesday night. I think you're going to uh, see a team that genuinely loves each other and enjoys each other's company, and, and I hope that that shows in their play. Well, and then after that, you you know, don't jump too far here. We know you're still focusing on Tuscan, but uh, make the trip over the long trip to, to Newberry for uh, a, a place that historically has been tough to play, a Leaser Arena over there. Uh, so we know that's going to be a challenge facing Newberry on this weekend. Well, Newberry's a great great team, and Sean does such a good job with his players, and, you know, they've had some great victories. Uh, matter of fact, I believe they're the only team that beat Columbus State, who's uh, ranked highly in our region, and, and so, I mean, they're, you know, they can get hot quickly, and, and um, I think that they're a very smart, very fundamentally sound team. Uh, so, again, you know, I, I think that that's – uh, definitely something we got to focus on and, and put together a game plan and you know and we'll start working on that uh, Wednesday night once we get past Tuscaloosa. Well and then what are you expecting to see from your girls after that uh, bouncing back from that loss? Um, like I said I just think that you know as as hard as it was to, to swallow uh, getting beat um, you know the excitement the pep in our step the you know, all the little things that we had Monday night was very encouraging. I mean, practice was fun and uh, exciting and, and, you know, um, and, and that's really what the game should be like. And, you know, I just, I just feel like if we could get back to playing how we were when we were loose and, and uh, you know, playing to win, um, then we'll be a great team to watch come Wednesday night.